Hey, what's up, everybody? This is John Ricard speaking, and you are listening to Camera Work Podcast, episode 44. To find me, you can check my Instagram. It's John Ricard. That's at J-O-H-N-R-I-C-A-R-D. Now, my guest this week is my wife, Tamara. Now, this is like really cool that she's here because she's been like dying to be on for so long it's kind of like lucy and ricky on um i love lucy where like lucy's always like oh can i come to the club and ricky's just like no you know it's like i have no room for you so she's been begging to be on the podcast since the last time she was on which is like well over a year ago and it was more than a year ago it was more than a year ago she says all right but she's back here so say hello tamara Hi, Tamara. You got to be closer to the mic, Tamara. I got to be closer to the mic. Okay. Hi, right. everybody. Right. What is your Instagram so people can find you? Um, I think it's Tamara NYC. Or is it Tamara NYCC? I don't know. I think it's Tamara NYCC on Instagram, right? Okay. Now, she's actually a speech therapist. She doesn't really do a photo-related job, but you'll understand why I wanted her here today as we go on. But the first topic we're going to talk about today, and maybe you can join into this, Tamara, because she doesn't know we're talking about this particular topic. But I wanted to talk about five things that I don't like about podcasts when I listen to other podcasts. And these are things that like we try to avoid on this podcast, because when I listen to other stuff, this is the stuff that doesn't really work for me. Okay, so here goes my list. So number one would be introductions. I'm just not a fan of introductions, period. I don't understand the need for them. Like if I'm watching a YouTube video, I always wish that they would just say like, today we're going to talk about depth of field and then just jump into it without playing theme songs or introducing everything they're going to do and then coming back and doing it. So I never really understand the need for that, particularly on a podcast where they have a guest and they like introduce the guest where the guest isn't there yet. You know, these podcasts that do these like bookend recordings, like they record an intro, and then they play the podcast interview, and then they kind of record an outro. So they introduce the guest on that bookend intro. Then when they get with the guest face to face, they introduce the guest again. And it personally drives me crazy. So, and I know you listen to a bunch of podcasts, right? What do you listen to? What podcasts? I actually don't listen to a bunch of podcasts. So um, I hear them as you're listening to them. I don't necessarily like podcasts too much. I, I, I think the ones that you listen to are too long. Um, but I don't necessarily like talking about the things I don't like. I prefer to talk about the things I like. And right. um, I actually like uh, My Leaks podcast. It's about the only podcast I listen to um, religiously. And they're always about 30 minutes or under 30 minutes. Right. So, well, I don't mind the length. I'm just talking right now know. about introductions. And but, she, she doesn't but, really have guests. It's just kind of her sitting and talking, uh, reflecting or liking. Right. It. But what is so, the podcast you're referring to? What is it called? Um... Gosh, I don't know. It's it's on Podomatic and it's my leak. M Y L. Well, if I can find the words, I'll put yeah, it at the bottom of the screen here. Okay, number name. two for me of what I don't like when I'm listening to podcasts is too many inside jokes. When you have shows where they have like two or three guys who do the podcast together and they're referencing things that you don't know what they're referring to, or they're just laughing at a bunch of jokes that you as the audience are not privy to. You don't know the joke and you just kind of feel left out of the conversation and it starts to feel very self-indulgent. Maybe that's done on purpose, so. I don't know why they do it. I I don't understand it. I I can't tell you why it's done. Two people talking, they're friends. They don't necessarily think about the audience too much, so. Yeah, but I think you should be more conscious of the audience. And again, one of those things we try to avoid on this podcast. Number three on my list are when hosts are not on the mic or they don't care about the audio quality. And to that note, Tamara, we're going to put you really close to the mic, and you're going to be in the middle of the mic like I this. I swear to you, I can't get any closer. No, but you're going to be in the middle, not on the edge. Okay. Okay, more in the middle like I am. Right. But I hear a lot of podcasts where like guys start getting casual, like they're doing these ones where they're using like the microphone that's built into the computer screen because they're on Skype. And then they start sitting back, and they get all casual, and as they do it, the audio quality drops. And I hear a lot of podcasts where they use the iPhone, and instead of just investing in like a $49 microphone for the iPhone to make the audio really good, they just just hold like, the, the iPhone anywhere and they're just recording and the sound is all thin and it drives me crazy and I know the sound on our podcast is not perfect it really isn't but I have spent a lot of time researching how to make the sound good a lot I really have and I've spent a lot of money I mean the gear we use for this podcast cost me over a thousand dollars to buy the microphones and That's mixer ludicrous. people are like on their computers on their 
max with a little microphone around their necks and right. that's about and, it like nobody really know. let me get up oh, hold on let me get this mic situation straight so i don't think you need you need to go out and spend over a thousand dollars you know i to i just what we do this. it's what we do to try to make this sound good and i hope it does sound I'm good i'm sure it's appreciated it's important to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, number four on my list of things I don't like when I'm listening to other podcasts. Number four, visual elements on an audio podcast absolutely drives me crazy when things are happening. They're referring to a t-shirt that someone is wearing or something that's in the background on a Skype podcast, or they're holding something up and no one makes an effort to describe it. And on this podcast, we keep it primarily as an audio thing, even though there is a YouTube version that you can always search for. And sometimes we'll show something. I'll hold up, you know, my Leica camera or Steven Gomez uh, a couple weeks ago was holding up his Fuji. But we keep those to a minimum or at least we describe what we're holding up so that people who are listening on audio can feel included in the process. Last thing on my list. Mm, It's a long list. Well, it's only five things. Number five, last one is... When the conversation is too much about the podcast... The lights and, are dancing on the Empire State Building. Well, that's Isn't completely that nice? irrelevant right now. <laughs> Go but ahead. We, when people are talking about the podcast itself rather than the topic they're supposed to talk about, and this conversation here, and this is episode 44, is probably the first time we've done anything close to that on this podcast where we're kind of talking about podcasts and not something related to photography, but... I hear a lot of podcasts where they spend so much time talking about, you know, feedback to the podcast and how it's growing or what they need or what they're doing themselves and the podcast that they're not really talking about whatever you tuned in for, whether that's The Walking Dead or Batman or whatever it is. So again, one of the things we try to do on this podcast is kind of stay focused on something related to photography in some way, shape or form and not spend a lot of time talking about the podcast and that little five minute thing. It's one of the few times that we might have violated that. But I did just want to share that because I was thinking about it as I was listening to some of the podcasts that I listen to. Five things that kind of drive me crazy when I'm listening to other podcasts. All right. All right. Bravo. That was great. Okay. But anyway, this, let me explain why I brought Tamara on. Okay. So Tamara is actually a speech therapist. She had not doing... Um, She's not in a field that most people would consider creative. She's not doing the kind of job that, say, freelance, where you're wondering where your check is coming from, whatever. So her career choice is very different from mine. And often I will try to encourage her to do things a little bit closer to what I'm doing. And we certainly encourage our daughter to do things like I'm doing to be very artistic. And sometimes she seems like that's just not something she's that into. But about a year ago, she read a book and... She was taking all these notes on the book and it gave her all these writing exercises. And one of the results after reading the book was she said to herself, I'm going to do something creative. And what she decided to do was to create a blog. And the blog is now called Tamara Loves. TamaraLoves.com. Right. right. I like to talk about the things that I love. It's ironic that you started your podcast, you know and discuss the things that you don't like too much. Well, so. that's only this week. That's it's not what we week. normally You're right. Do. Yeah, absolutely correct. We spend 90% of the time talking about my dumb like a camera of that course. I love, okay? Oh, you know you love that camera. Right. But anyway, but she created a blog and what I thought was funny about it was that I've been blogging since very very early. I was on blogging much earlier than most people. In all the years I've been blogging, I have never found my voice. It it just never works. Every six months, I come up with a different thing that the blog is going to be about. And a month later, I just stop writing. And it's your typical blog that you see where you click that link on the website that says blog. And nothing has been posted there for nine months. And it just makes you dismiss that photographer as being inactive. But her blog ended up getting a lot, I don't know if it's a lot of traffic because it's such a relative word. It's hard to define yeah, a lot of I traffic. I would say a lot of traffic. But, but it certainly got way more traffic than my blog. Mm-hmm. And I've been blogging forever. And blogging is actually important to me because I look at blogging as something that can potentially get me more work. And then here you're doing the blogging just with no goal, very free from outcome. Well, it's for me. So uh, I think that's the the voice that I have, it's mine and I'm creating it for me. And if other people check it out, then that's cool. But right. And I think for me, the blog is always very calculated. Like what can I write about it's for other people? Well, it's for other people, right? It's for people who might hire me is all I'm right. the only reason I'm blogging. Cause honestly, I don't really have a desire to blog. I just don't, I do like Instagram. I have a desire to, and to do Instagram. I don't have a desire to blog, but I'll tell you what it reminds me of the difference between your blog and my blog. There's that movie diary of a wimpy kid. 
And it's interesting because you have this boy, I can't remember his name, but he's the main character. And at the beginning of the year, he kind of comes up with this plan to like become cool, to become like the cool kid of his junior high school. And he has all of these calculated plans about what he's going to do to become cool. And his best friend is someone named Rowley, who is the exact opposite of him. Rowley is purely himself. Rowley's not trying to be cool at all. Like if Rowley loves his mother, he's not embarrassed to say to people, I love my mother. If his mother were dancing in public, he's not embarrassed that his mother is dancing in public. He's gonna go join her in dancing. And throughout the year in the movie, you just see that everything Kevin does, that's his name, Kevin. Kevin. Everything Kevin does kind of just falls apart. This is your life, by the way. You, you know you have a kid when you're like referring to a diary, diary of a wimpy kid. Yeah, unfortunately. You're asking your friend. It, please, the, the last time we did the podcast, I had Steven and Ray here, and I started telling them I was going to see Kung Fu Panda 3. <laughs> and excited about it. Oh, I was tremendously excited. And I asked them if they had seen like the other two, and the both of them were like, we've never seen either one of them. And I'm like, how can you guys have not seen part one? Because they don't have... 10 year olds I guess not but I kept telling them like the part one is like one of the greatest movies ever made go see it and Steven said he is gonna watch it so we'll see but anyway the point is because Rowley is so genuine everything he does just connects with people and because Kevin is so contrived and so forced the things he does do not really connect with people and you know, it just doesn't work for him trying to be cool. Rowley ends up being cooler than him, even though if you looked at the two of them, you would think Kevin is a cooler one. But that's what it reminds me of the difference between your blog and my blog, that mm -hmm. I'm kind of calculatedly saying to myself, well, let me blog about this, and then clients will respond or whatever. And you're just kind of blogging like, hey, this is Tamara Loves, this is what Tamara Loves, and you might write about a restaurant, you might write about some travel. And for whatever reason, well, not for whatever reason, but because there is an authenticity about what you're doing, people can read the blog and they like it and they end up following right. and things like that. Right. So I just think that's funny that you who yourself might label yourself as not being that creative, right. you're succeeding on that level far better than me mm -hmm. who is very quick to label himself as creative. And I credit whatever book it is that you read to right. kind of giving you the, the spark to do this. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the book is called uh, Life by Design by Tom Ferry. And I don't really know much about him. I guess he's a motivational speaker, but it wasn't even a book that I purchased. I actually um, went you to the library. It? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, it's actually one of the books I returned. Because <laughs> that's all, it could be theft, but no. Um, so we visited, visited the uh, library, and um, I'm browsing. You know, it's a small little one next to our house. And I stumbled on the book, and I said, oh, yeah, whatever, this looks pretty cool. Let me check it out. And of course, um, started reading it, and it moved me, I guess, from the very first couple of pages. And that's like super important when, you, when I'm reading a book. I just really have to get into it um, within the first couple of pages. Like, if I'm... Yes, not moved and it, you know that's how Tamara is if you're trying to tell her yeah. story also and it kind of takes you too long to get there she's yeah, going to I, call you out you, you, yeah you need you need to get me in the first couple of pages or you know it's just not happening but I thought the book was fantastic right. now I asked you to write a few just to, to kind of tell, a, a, mm -hmm. tell us a few specific things that you got from the book not yeah. a general I love the book but mm -hmm. tell us a few specific things no, that you I will. Up from the book I will definitely so um the book is, I, I think it's divided into two phases uh, because my notes says two phases. However, um, in the very beginning on page 30 in the book, so it jumps straight to the exercises and it is a self-help book. So it's trying to get you to live your life by your own design, you know, and so many, I, me included, so many of us don't necessarily you know, or we're not living our lives uh, the way we want to, the way we would want to design it. So the title alone struck me. So these were the questions that the book asked you to answer about yourself. And the first one is, how do you feel about your career? Right. So, you know, major. That's where I'm spending, or that's a huge part of me. I'm spending six, seven, eight hours a day at work. And, um, you know, you take work home with you. So you're, I'm spending a ton of my time, you know, just looking at career. So it was a huge question for me and a, a big one for me to answer. Um, how do you feel about your relationships? 
Number and that two. was great, I'm sure. <laughs> you're in a relationship with me, so I'm sure that was like. <laughs> oh, it was easy, fantastic, easy. definitely. Um, and not just about you know your relationship with your husband, wife, or whatever. It's it's just about your relationships in general with your friends, with your family, uh, because you know we're multi-dimensional people. Um, how do you feel about your health and stamina? Huge, you know. Uh, so many again, you know. I don't know how many people are couch people like I am. I feel like I could be doing a whole ton more regarding my health and regarding stamina, working out, but I don't. Right. You know, I know right. what I'm supposed to do. And what I'm, what I'm <laughs> hearing, I, I guess, is it. that it's a kind of thing where maybe if you hadn't read the book, you might not have really thought about right. it. You just kind of do what you're doing every day, every day, every day, mm -hmm. and not consciously and saying... And you say, I'll get to it. Oh, I'll, I'm going to start right. working out, or I'm right. going to start doing this, but you don't really get to it. Right. And you the know? book is kind of making you examine that. Right. right. How do you feel about it? Right. You know? What else um, from this book? How do you feel about your income? Huge. Because our income, it, you know, helps us get by on a day-to-day -day basis, but it also, you know, often tells us what our self-worth is, unfortunately, you know, because right. if you're paid minimum wage, then that's how you feel sometimes. You don't necessarily feel like a boss. You don't feel like a person who, you know, is, uh, you know, what making moves and making decisions. You feel like a person who's making minimum wage. Like you feel like you're being told what to do. You do it and you don't really have a say much and you kind of come and go. Uh, so income is, is major. You know, it really helps define us. It helps define our lifestyle because if you're not making a ton of money, you can't go on vacations. You can't buy the nice things that you want. So right. That's and you can't post all that stuff on Instagram. Definitely Fancy can't post any of that stuff. That. Nope, unless you're <laughs> straight fooling. I don't know. Right. Um, number five, what areas of your life are you avoiding? So avoidance, and that's huge. You talk about that a lot. So, you know, people do that so that they don't necessarily have to get to the things that, uh, you know, they have to overcome. So Right, and we talk about talk that about on the podcast that. a lot mm -hmm. when we talk about that book, The War of Art, which talked about resistance and how you have this resistance to certain things that you should be doing in your career, and then you just avoid all of these things. And uh, I think that's a good term for it, too, is resistance, the things yes. you're just avoiding. And uh, the last question, uh, question number six, uh, is there something in your life you feel incomplete with? So that can be just about anything for anybody. It can be personal. It can be, you know... Um, whatever with your career it could be you know just anything um that you don't necessarily feel as complete with or you know something that again you might have been avoiding or whatever right. the case might be so you translate that how you'd like so those are the first six questions and i feel like if you can get through those first six questions honestly then you know getting through the rest of the book was a complete and total breeze but, right what is the book called again life by design right by tom ferry Right, cool. Mm -hmm. What else did you get from it? Tell us another thing. Um, another thing, I, uh, well, let me tell you what my lesson was that I actually wrote down because I, I really took the book very seriously. I was very honest about it. Uh, I won't share my answers with you, but I will. Oh, are they in the I, notebook? I, <laughs> I will she has read a little, you my lesson. She has lesson. a notebook if you look at the video. Look, I'll show you. She has a notebook here. Yes. And maybe um, we can read the notebook and see what her answers are. So lesson, get present uh, to the notion that you are responsible for what you create in life. You can own it, push it aside, or make it new, or, and make better choices. So huge. So, you know, like, you, but you're responsible for you. You know, you work hard, you don't work hard, you um, go after what you want, you don't go after what you want. That's something that I feel like everyone owns, you know, whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, whatever the case might be, it's, it's a huge lesson. Right, but a lot of times I think people try to dodge that because mm -hmm. like say in photography, you had a lot of people who were trying to say like digital killed their career when we went from film to digital that that killed them, but ultimately it's you that either survives or does not survive that right. adapts to whatever the changes well, are. Well, that's exactly what um, my next words were gonna be, adapt or adapt die or is it adopt adapt. or adapt adapt, adapt, adapt or, die. or die exactly yeah. so uh, that's huge uh, mm -hmm. most of us are resistant to change and it's it's natural I'm sorry I'm slipping off the chair mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm on a booster because I'm right. supposed trying to, to get her height okay. to be equal to my I'm height really for the short. video <laughs> so you know as humans we don't want to change it's it's uncomfortable um, we don't like it we like being where we are we like being who we're you know we, we like to 
basically keep things the way they are because it becomes comfort. It's comfortable. Right. And the moment you do have to change, um, we resist it, you know, and that's, I think just about every leadership book you read will tell you that you have to be comfortable with change. Right. I think one of the weird things is I think people are too quick to define themselves. I think like for myself, I only define myself by a few core qualities that I have as being a good person. But there is a lot of me that I feel is undefined. Like for years, I was a karate person. Now I'm a Brazilian jujitsu person. Or for years, I shot film and now I shoot digital, whatever. There are a lot of things in my life that I'm willing to change and I'm not mm -hmm. married to those things. I'm married to you. I'm not married to all these other things. But well, I you see. can always change me too though. Oh, That's well, you know <laughs> anyway. That's not permanent. <laughs> but I, I don't find that I have to have this allegiance. Like you get these people who are like fighting on Facebook or they're fighting on Twitter because you said something they don't like and they feel a need to defend it and their opinions can never change. And it's funny because like one time I was talking on Facebook to Stephen Gomez who's on the podcast periodically and he had said a new Leica camera had come out and then he thought I wasn't going to like it. And he commented something along the lines of like, yeah, I know you're going to hate this camera. And I said, no, I love this thing. They got it right and whatever. It's because you hate everything, though. No. So maybe that's why. No, that's not why. But he that's said to why. me, he said, wow, I can never predict your reaction to a new Leica. And I thought that said something about me because, again, I love my M9 and my M240, but that doesn't mean I'm going to love everything the company puts out. I'm very quick to diss something that they put out that isn't good. I don't feel connected to it in that way, but I think with a lot of things in life, people feel like this is who they are and those things can't change. And I think it's just a mistake to be that way. You should be open to change and you should have a few core values that never change that really reflect who you are. And all this other superficial stuff, you should be very quick mm -hmm. to be able to change those things. Um, anything else you want well, to point I mean, out from the book? Well, um, I, I think this is something that a lot of you guys know already. Um, just having vision and clarity. I think is huge and that's you know it kind of goes into what you're talking about where you're not really necessarily married to any real idea or whatever the case might be so as you have a vision you have a clarity of, of what you like and what you don't like it's right. it's clear you don't and now it doesn't have to be constant right it doesn't have to be well i don't like red so i'm never gonna you right. know Those things like change. anything that's red right. but you have a vision you have a clarity and understanding of right. who you are and and what aesthetics you right. know, are pleasant to and you, whatever the case might because, be. Like but. right now, they have these like political debates going on, and they'll go like, you know, five years ago, mm -hmm. you didn't agree with this bill. And then the guy has to somehow prove that his opinion has not changed in five years. And I'm always thinking, why is they just say, yeah, five years ago, I didn't agree with it, but I read some books, and I really thought right. about it, and I changed my mind, and now right. I do agree with it. But that's, it, it's that's, so that, that's a change again, right? right. We, we should be allowed to change. And oftentimes, we're not allowed to change. We, right. we kind of have to stay... Um, the way we are and 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 you know uh, what's the word like just well not, sometimes it, it's stubborn is what it it's is not necessarily because i feel like people expect you to have a certain type of belief, thought, right. value, well, your whatever friends the case will might often be. Exactly. put you into a box. And right. it's funny because, you know, with photographers, there's always this kind of weird thing of like, if you shoot a model and then there's this temptation on the photographer's part to say, like, don't bring anybody, don't bring a friend. And I can come across looking really sleazy and you've got this ulterior motive as to why you want her here without the friend or whatever. And I'm sure some of that exists. But what also exists is the idea that when you take this girl who works at Burger King and she's never been in front of the camera before and you try to turn her into a superstar in front of the camera and she has her friend with her from Burger King, that friend will very much try to bring her back down to being the girl from Burger King. Back to minimum wage. Right? right, and not a model. And I'm here with my hair and makeup people, or even if it's just me, making her feel like she's a superstar and she's buying into the idea that, oh my God, you know, I'm Naomi Campbell up here. And the instant the friend says, oh, look at you up there modeling, you know, I'm gonna send this picture to the people at Burger King and she snaps a little screenshot, the girl gets brought back to reality and she can't be that superstar now because you've reminded her that she's not. But the issue is that the friend sees her a certain way mm -hmm. and when you take 
this model wannabe girl out of that box, the friend tries to put her back in the box. Well, it's it's comfortable for the friend right. to that's have how she her knows friend, her. Right. you know, be her friend from Burger King. Right. And that's, you know, people want to kind of stay in their comfort zone. Right. That's, and ideally, it's normal. It's normal. It's natural. Right. So, and if you, you and know. if you, and hopefully, what you do is you try to make friends that aren't going to be that way. And I know, like, mm-hmm. if you look at Ray, when Ray first started doing yoga, and he said to me, like, you know, I might do the yoga teacher training, and I was like, man, you should do it. That's like the greatest thing ever. You should do it, even if you're never going to teach a class just do it because it's on your mind you have nothing to lose like i encouraged him to do that i didn't say to him like dude what are you gonna do that for man waste your time with this yo no i'm encouraging him to do whatever he can do so um any other points you want to make from the book okay so this is um basically one of the the biggest points and this came towards the end so after you're through with all of the exercises um you should be at the point where you're living your life by design right of course because that's the title of the book but um i have written down move through the world by setting the example that other people will want to live up to now to me that's just kind of what what your parents taught you right right like you're it's probably a biblical lesson as well and i truly truly believe in it you know and that's Probably one of the biggest things that um, I took away from the book is just to live your life the way it's it's it should be an example. It shouldn't be just for you. It shouldn't just be your wants, your needs, and and you know what it is that you want out of life. Again, live it in a way that other people can look to you as an example and say, oh, right. wow, you know, Tamara um, started this blog and she's not a blogger. She's not a writer. She's not a photographer. I think that's pretty cool. You know, I think I want to do something like that. Right. You know, and I, I do tell people at work like, oh, yeah, I do this blog. It's not huge. It's just kind of my own thing. And they often get super excited. Like, oh, I take pictures. I go get a, go to WordPress.com. It's right. free. Right. Yeah. Anybody you know? can do it. Right. <laughs> Put your pictures up there. I think your, your right. pictures are phenomenal. So, you know, just we should have different outlets and we should really be an example. Right. And I've worked with tons of people as well who are like, oh, you know, how many years did it take for you to go to school? Whatever, whatever, how many years it takes for you to get a master's right. degree? Two years, you know, on top of um, undergrad. No, oh, that's too long. No, it isn't. Like, you, we've been working together now for like four years. <laughs> you could right. have had your master's degree. Oh, but it's too yeah, hard. Yeah, the amount of time to keep asking right. about it. Oh, oh, it's too hard. No, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, just show up. Show right. up every single day. You put the work in. And, you know, you too can do whatever it is that you feel like doing. And I know so, for me, you know, I have a hard time seeing myself in that role that you're saying. I do it with my daughter. I will very consciously say to her, hey, look at the way I'm doing such and such. Look at the struggling that I'm doing with this. That's the same way you should be approaching what you're doing. And you should be willing to struggle and fight hard for it. Certain things that I give her an example for other things like say my Instagram feed or what I'm posting on YouTube, I don't usually think of it that way. And it was funny because Sean Cummings from Show Magazine the other day it posted something to me on Instagram. He's like, oh, you're an inspiration and you should be trying to inspire people. And I'm like, okay, I'll try. But it's usually hard for me to see me, myself in that role mm-hmm. outside of just my daughter. Cause she's yeah, but why one. is that though? I feel like there are um, so many adults people that you know you might just meet or people that you know again i think when i meet people i encourage Mm -hmm. people to do things all the time i've always said to people that it's not fair that only um whoever uh uh, jj abrams gets to be a director you should get to be a director too and you should Mm -hmm. go make some movies on youtube or it's not fair that kate upton is the most famous model you should get to be a model too even if it's just instagram so i've always encouraged people in that way but i think As I mentioned on a previous podcast, I think for me, certain things that are supposed to be inspiring often are not inspiring to me because they do make me question, why am I not doing what this person is doing? And what am I doing with my time versus what they're doing with their time? And they make me question myself and they end up not being inspired. Comparison is a theft of joy. Say it again. Comparison is a theft of theft of joy okay. <laughs> I'm like stumbling all over through right this yeah. that was very <laughs> profound wow beautifully profound there Go on, I'm sorry <laughs> but right what well, whatever comparison can often mm-hmm. not be a good thing and again yeah. and I'm honest about it so but I'm just saying so I think because sometimes things that are supposed to be inspirational are not actually inspirational to me then I probably assume things that I am doing are not necessarily inspirational to other people mm-hmm. so maybe they are at times if they are I hope they are yeah I, I feel like many times that. um 
we do inspire people in um, small ways and in big ways. Um, so just kind of keep it in mind. Right. You, know, you never know. You, and sometimes you, they'll tell that, you. That really, right. Sometimes they'll let you know. Sometimes they won't. But right. it really should just be the way you move through the world, you know. And I love move through the world. Not just, you know, with your daughter. Not just, right. you know, in your relationship with people that you know, but you're moving through the world, meaning every single person that you touch, every single person that you talk to, every single person that you know you encounter should get that part of you that um, really is the example. You know, right. like it really should be. And I feel like it would be such a better world if we all did that. Right. Well, we try. OK. Anyway, we're going to wrap there. I want to thank Tamara, my lovely wife, for being on the podcast. You're welcome. Tell them where they find you again on Instagram. I don't even know my Instagram. What is it? Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-A-N-Y-C or try Tamara N-Y-C-C. Yeah, I think One it's Tamara other. N-Y-C-C. Or you can go to my blog, TamaraLoves.com, because I really just wanted to write about the things that I loved, believe it or right. not. So it's sort of like a hodgepodge. There's no real rule to it. Yeah. I um, just will just chat about some of the things that I encounter that I really love. Right. From books okay, I haven't checked it in like right, forever, well, but there better be a, a page on finish. me if it's Tamara Loves. There better be a whole bunch of entries on me. I'm going to sure. check it and I'm going to find it. <laughs> right. Anyway, if you want to find me, it's John Ricard on Instagram, J-O-H-N-R-I-C-A-R-D. Thanks for listening. Hope to get you guys back again next week. Bye-bye.